Are you okay? Kevin? Oh, man, the podcast just started, and Kevin saved an acoustic guitar. Hold on, make sure it's okay. Play a chord. Uh, that's a tuck of mine. Yeah, it's true. mostly okay. <laughs> Should have let it fall. Uh, hold on, let's try Let me check it out. Every rose has its thorn. Just like every... What is it? Cowboy. <laughs> No, As it's... a rhinestone. <laughs> <laughs> it is cowboy, right? I don't know. <laughs> it's that third line, yeah. We don't listen like to secular every music. Night has its dawn. Is that it's it? Like every cowboy sings a sad, 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 sad song. song. Uh-huh. Every rose has its thorn. Mamas don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. <laughs> that, that's the sequel to that song, right? Yep. Well, I guess there's just no intro to this uh, episode. <laughs> this intro <laughs> sucks. So well, this it, intro brought to you by sucks. Well, hold on. <laughs> it actually documented a real-time event that was pretty awesome of Kevin saving our beloved acoustic guitar, which we rely on in all of our VIP sessions and yep. uh, whatnot. It. It, it, like, literally punching my hand. It really hurt. Like, that actually I, hurt. It looked pretty bad. I wish there was a video you you of that. saved it like 85% of the way to its death, so yes. you deserve a round of applause. It was, it was coming down pretty hard. I think it would have smashed. The reason that said incident even happened to begin with is because we are driving down the road right now from Minnesota to Nashville. This is true. Which is a new thing. It is something that is happening as we speak. Not as you listen, because by that point we'll be long, long, long gone. It'll be days ago. It'll be... It'll be at least days ago. Yeah, for sure. They say time travel does not exist. Then how? Tell me this, future person. (laughs) What will you you most likely be doing when this podcast airs, when people are listening to it? Probably I'll be... um Looking down at uh, my funeral and watching people like pass by the box and crying and <laughs> stuff like that. And it got dark so quick. <laughs> so you expect to be deceased within two or three days? When, at least. I don't know how I've made it this far. When, when that happens, do we bring coins to throw in? Now, or put a couple like on that? my eyeballs if you don't okay. care. Yeah, I'll be I'll be probably sitting alone at a coffee shop in Greenville, South Carolina. If you want to find me. <laughs> There's only so many coffee shops in Greenville. There's only so many. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll be probably... Or I'll be asleep. I'll I'll be soothing my baby to sleep. You will both be in dreamland together. Yes. Drew, yes. what might you be doing on a day such as the future? <laughs> well, like I was going to say, statistically, I'll be asleep because that's a third of my life. Isn't that sad? Maybe for you. I sleep great. <laughs> I just hate that we... Sleep is definitely more than a third of my life. More than a third. (laughs) I just really hate when I start to think about how much time is lost to sleep because imagine if you had a body that didn't need sleep. Well, that's a great segue to our next topic, football, because John Gruden does not need eight hours of sleep. He only sleeps about three or four hours a night. When he was coaching the Raiders, he would like wake up at 5 a.m. and stay up until midnight or 1 or 2 a.m. and it was just every day and he thought something was wrong with him but he was like coming up with so much good material because he was awake four hours before everybody that's what i'm saying right and so uh, efficient he went to to this doctor and he said you know you're fine you're functioning fine he's like yo i can't sleep i have insomnia right like tell me what's wrong with me and he said no you just don't need it so you keep to that schedule and keep taking advantage of it whatever the opposite of what john gruden has is what i have I think yeah. it's called anti grudenitis Yes, because <laughs> Grudenitis sounds like a real. At home, <laughs> at home, I go to bed at like you know one or two or whatever, and then have to get up because my nine-year-old is a psycho, and she w- sets her alarm at five forty-five every morning. And she thinks it's cool. She thinks it's awesome. She thinks she's adulting by you know setting her alarm, whatever, and makes me get up and she doesn't have to be to school until 7.45, but she makes me take her at 7 because that's the earliest time that she could be there. So I don't get it, you know, hardly any sleep when I'm at home, but on the road, you guys can attest, I'm crushing it. At least double that amount. I'm crushing it. I'm not getting up before 10 or 11 or 12 o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and attribute the lack of bus banter for the past uh, year to to that actually <laughs> when was oh, yeah, the last better, bus banter look, look up on the interwebs in when was the last bus banter um no one knows actually it's been lost to uh, history at this point <laughs> there's there's an elephant in this room that you cannot see and this is it 
But, but we have new. De <laughs> Excuse you, Joey. We have new developments in that realm because we recently acquired four home microphones that we're going to Skype on and do home banter. We'll still call oh. it bus banter for continuity's sake. But um, we're going to be cranking out more episodes because we're going to be able to call each other and just just shoot the breeze for half an hour or so. Yeah, since we've tried three times to make that happen from home. and It's a learning I don't, curve. I don't appreciate his negativity. <laughs> Nor I. You know, <laughs> I'm the tour manager now. It's my job to be negative. <laughs> I, I'm hoping that whenever we do the Skype sessions at home, yeah. that there's like a two-second delay. Yep. You know, like CNN is like talking to somebody over in Pakistan and there's like this, some kind of delay, right? <laughs> so I hope there's like some kind of delay with us. So whenever you tell a joke, you'll be, <laughs> you'll be over there and the punchline will be delivered and all that. And we're all just sitting there and it's like, whatever. And he gets his feelings hurt for two right. seconds because we're right. not laughing at him. I'll go ahead and start explaining the joke. And then you guys start laughing. Ah! They were like, what are you doing? <laughs> we got it. We got it. There it is. Delay. There it is. Yes. That was the delay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Joey. There was a delay. It's like the the CNN person is always like, "Yeah, that's there right, was Joe." That delay. Yeah, there was, <laughs> well, hey, so what? Maybe hey, if me and so Andrew use Drew, our delay pedals, you, we can negate set. Hey, that's my idea. What? <laughs> were you? Hello, was everybody. Was that actually your idea, or were you just copying me? All right. <laughs> this is where I wish a video camera was here when you just see his face like that. I know. <laughs> Um, uh. So, all that to say, hopefully, we have we have made grand plans to to do more episodes more Master often. Master grand plans. Yes, and, and um, it's really due to the demand from you, our listeners, y'all, y'all <laughs> listeners. Oh uh, uh, yeah, that is a there's very more than popular one. <laughs> podcast audience term oh. to refer to everyone at the same time. So uh, we just played a show in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and Rochester, Minnesota. Had our first taste of winter weather. Ugh. How did everybody feel about uh, the winter weather this weekend? So I feel like we were subjected to the harshness in Green Bay because we get there. It's snowing. I hadn't even thought about snow this whole year. And brutal, icy, nasty, like, you know, snowy melting on the ground, walking through that all day, puddles. But then today, Ugh. even though it was freezing outside, it was sunny and pleasant looking. And so I actually enjoyed today's weather more in comparison to the Green Bay weather. Oh, yeah. But absolutely, like I said this morning, you open that window up and there's a, a nice park there with some fall leaves on the ground. Yeah. And it's this, this whole farce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, Minnesota, it, it's, it's been a state for a long time. It's had plenty of years and centuries to practice fooling Native Americans and now current Americans into thinking it's fall. <laughs> oh my gosh. But it's 30 degrees outside. Yep. yep. It's oh, a, it's a, it's a, man. It's, a, it's had so much practice. It's a major ruse, yeah. Uh, so how about that Green Bay show, Cup of Joy, that we play in Green Bay, Wisconsin? How about that show? Well, they were really packed in. Ah, they were. Um, Rogers, that. Uh, Sorry if it was a bit cheesy. We're their favorite band. <laughs> oh my god. Can you turn the TV off, Josh? He is the potter and we are the clay Matthews. Yes. <laughs> we, we were we were the Bart star of the show last night. Ah, oh, yes. Thank you. There's no more Packers. <laughs> that was it. We, just, um, we discussed this earlier. We were the <laughs> we were the Reggie White guys on stage during. Uh, That's who I was trying to think of earlier. There may he go. rest in peace. I, yeah, I, may he I, rest in I peace. I thought I was talking about. I thought the Blind Side guy was a Packer, and he oh. was like, "No, he's a Viking." And I was like. Who's the guy I'm thinking of? No, There's Greg Reggie Odin White. was yeah. a raven. I don't know where he is now. Odin's raven? Greg Isn't that Odin's a, raven? Yeah, that's an anchorman Wait, thing. Is it Greg Odin was his name or Greg Ogden? I, I don't, don't know. know. If it is Odin and it's a raven. Odin's that, raven? I was about to say that must be a real thing. So I f Let me come back to Reggie White as soon as y'all are done. <laughs> I found out today that the anchorman movies are not appreciated by actual real anchorman. Is that right? Uh, the promoter today, Ken, who, he, he works at a news station, and we went to pick up some coffee and everything, and we were talking about, like, his wife is the anchor at this particular news station. I was like... I believe it's anchoress. Anchor woman. No, no, I'm just kidding. 
the Anchorette actually is. I was like, I was like, I was like, so do you guys like the Anchorman movies? He's like, no, they're stupid. And I was like, oh, I love them. I think they're hilarious. And that's where the that's where the conversation stopped. And that was the end of it, dude. There is. There is no way they can't appreciate that kind of humor. He hates it. Well, yeah. I, I was just like, I was like, oh, okay. I, I just thought he'd be like, oh yeah, it's so funny. He said, nope, not not well, even that. If small. that's true, if if she represents all of the anchor men and women across America, then I have no respect for them because if they can't laugh at that movie, then what can they laugh at? Nothing. This is all news to me. But it reminds me of a similar experience I had recently <laughs> because uh, we toured with Rapture Ruckus last month and Brad, the lead. Front man of New of Rapture Ruckus is he's from New actually, Zealand. He's actually the lead Kiwi of the band. That's right, he is Kiwi. Uh, Bordist. The, yeah, <laughs> the Kiwi Bordist. Uh, chair one Kiwi, and uh, from New Zealand. And I asked him, I was like, "What do you think of like Flight of the Concords and this movie, What We Do in the Shadows, which are based on New Zealand uh, people?" Bruce. And it's like kind of, you know, it's New Zealandites making it, but it's like poking fun at them as well. And he's like, oh, I don't like them. They're not funny. And I was like, really? Like, we think they're hilarious. He's like, yeah, no, they're just not that funny. And so it must be just a thing where you just, if someone's making fun of your profession, maybe you just don't. Yeah. See, no, that's not true. Because we all love Spinal Tap. That's true. I was thinking that. And it's just not true. And he does uh, here's like what it is. the Concords. He saw them in concert and said it was really funny. Yeah. Oh, really? So okay. he actually does like them. He, so, he didn't like that movie, though. You were right okay. about that part. So maybe just anchor men are sensitive. <laughs> maybe well, they're just a little insecure I, and sensitive because feel, they, they really see hope, themselves in the mirror too much. I, I really hope that our good friend Ken is not listening to this episode after we just left the wonderful show he put on. We're not for saying anything bad about Ken. We're just saying <laughs> that they don't have good, you know, they obviously don't appreciate good humor. That's I what we're you, saying. I think you, said, thing, I right, think you yeah. said something about respect earlier. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, like the fact that they don't, they're not worthy of anybody ever respecting them as human <laughs> beings. I mean, that's not saying anything bad about him. No, no, right, right, right. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, well, in Anchorman, they say Ron Burgundy... I, oh, I, yeah. I, I, hate I hate you. I hate your guts. I hate your guts. But I hate your guts. And gosh, I hope you do die, I respect you. Gosh, do I respect yeah. you. <laughs> exactly. That's the point I'm trying to make. Yep. That's it. Sums it up. Vince yeah. Vaughn sums it up perfectly. I mean, I've only, I've only heard about it. I don't know. Right, right. That's, yeah. yeah. Who knows, really? Who can but, say? But um, if I could... Go back to Reggie White. Circle back. Yeah. Back you just the pendulum? other direction. Pendulum, even though there's only a D in that word. What what else would there be? Oh, you talking about like a J, like a J, is like how people usually say it. Yeah, pendulum, but it, the yeah. word is really pendulum. 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 I, I'm trying I, to think. I of say what pendulum. Else. I'm trying to think of what else would. It's kind of like pamphlet. I always said pamphlet. <laughs> that one's different. <laughs> I, always, I always thought it was pamphlet. Somebody was like, "No, it's pamphlet," and I was like, oh. "I've never read Shakespeare." Really? Ah, <laughs> nice. Lame. <laughs> Is that, is that when a female plays the main character? She's oh, it's like a Hamlet. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But right, pan, right. Okay. Oh! Yeah, sorry, let me explain it to you, Josiah. Oh, I think I consider the whole Pam Pan situation. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Richie White. Richie White. Richie White, for the love of God. He, he, All right. he loved Hold on. A lot. So, yeah, was, it, White, was it Reggie or Reggie? Man. Man. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, what? I just asked if it was Reggie or Reggie. I just... Since we're on this reggae, reggae. <laughs> it's actually reggae. Oh, that reminds uh, me of my favorite joke ever, which is um, I assume that the Grammy award for best reggae album every year automatically goes to the shortest reggae album. Yeah, I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Weird Al Yankovic. Right? That's Weird, Weird Al, correct? Yeah. Man. <laughs> Still got it. Yep. Dude, Killing it. Amazing. It's all right. Reggae White, go. Um. All right. So. <laughs> It's Christmas Day. Almost. It's like a month and a half away. 2000 and aught. I believe it was the year 2K. Oh. Uh, just so, Hold on. so we have reference points. Is that what the Y stood for? <laughs> I don't Y2K? Know. It's a computer thing. Are you freaking kidding me no. right now? I'm not in. I'm am. not in tech just because I'm from your, San your Jose. Your face <laughs> sold me on your seriousness of the question there. Thank your you. 2K. Your 2K. <laughs> Why 2000? Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's it's the year 2000 or maybe 2001. Space and uh, mm. my aunt mm. comes over. 
Christmas afternoon, as she does every year, with a few presents for me and my brother. And nice, um, a Tamagotchi, it's perhaps. It's always a hit. It's always a hit or miss with your extended family on getting gifts because either your parents or someone you know told them like, oh yeah, he'd really like this, and they got it. Right. Or they got something at a yard sale while they're getting something they wanted. Uh, <laughs> so there's there's really like a That's big good. discrepancy between. Yeah. So. I reference the year because I go to open this present from my wonderful aunt, and it's a <laughs> VHS-sized gift. So I know, okay, this All is right. this is a videotape in yep. here. And, Only uh, option back A lot then. of you people, younger folks listening, have no idea what I'm talking about, and you know, ask your parents or guardian, uh, <laughs> and they'll explain. I'm sure. Yeah. But ask the band guardian if uh, <laughs> they can explain VHSs to you. And uh, I I rip the wrapping paper off and I'm not really that into football I mean the 49ers are cool I was Steve Young for Halloween when I was a little kid when you were young and I opened this this package and it's not Star Wars Special Edition (laughs) or uh, you know whatever on uh, I don't know what would I have wanted on VHS back then Care Bears uh, season 3 no (laughs) It, it was not uh, tooth and nail volume, uh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, not yeah. OC Super Tones. Wow, wow, wow. It was not videos, Disciple yeah. Live at Home on the Road, <laughs> uh, which wasn't even made yet. But <laughs> it was in production, pre production. Yeah, pre pro. <laughs> it was a videotape about Reggie White leading people in prayer on the football field. And now that I think of it, he's kneeling on, on the cover. Oh, wow. Um, That's crazy. But. I, I'm like, this is the most random gift ever. It's like, this is like, Reggie White. Like, who is this? What, he plays for the Packers. Okay, In why Green, did yeah, I get this across video? the country? So, the I, I, is he a snack up there? I'm sorry. Pause. I think it, I feel like it smells like um, it smells like corn nuts or something. You don't think it's the battery? Because we did plug up. Hey, did he unplug the? Uh, did he oh, unplug no. the? The generator's still. On. No, the block heater. Block heater. Did he unplug the block heater? Ask him. Yeah, it might it might not be like an actual It doesn't smell the same as the normal smell, I feel like. It's not as burny. Passing by the egg farms of Minnesota. Yeah, I think it's just sulfur around here somewhere. Alright. Just another wonderful thing. You just got a lot I Minnesota has to offer. I hope you crank it up so you can hear I'm gonna try, yeah, I'll try to bring it out. That was our driver Craig talking to Joey and we we, we, He has a famous father. That's that's true. Can we can we say, I guess? I mean I I guess why not? I we just don't ask for his permission, that's how you that's how you say it. That's right. His father is uh William Lee Golden from uh, the Oak Ridge Boys, the big, the big bearded guy. Yep. He's not big. The guy with the big beard. The big beard did guy. The, the guy with yeah, the big who's big bearded. Charged. Yes. No, that's fine. Yes. And his son I is got, our I bus driver. That. Yep. I kind of He's awesome. Anyway. <laughs> all right. Um, Wait. Are you trying so, to start that story over? Yeah. You, no. I'm keeping all back, that. Back up a little bit. <laughs> and if you keep this, I'll be so mad. <laughs> I'm hearing it right now in the future somewhere. Yeah, I know. Ugh. If you were wearing headphones, you'd be able to hear what it Ugh. actually sounds like. I'm getting so like. mad just knowing how mad I'll be. I know. Um, <laughs> but pre mad. I open this VHS tape, Christmas Day 2000, whatever, and it's Reggie White, and I just am like, what the heck? So I have this tradition where every Christmas I call Dan, okay, uh, my best friend, and we talk about what we got from our parents for Christmas, and we always, oh, oh I got that too. Of I course. Got, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you got that? That's cool. Yeah. Like, I can't wait to come over. So I'm like, yeah, I got this random like videotape of Reggie White praying on the football field or something. It's like just the strangest gift, right? Well, at this time, I also had just started paying attention to sports, really, 12, 13 years old. So I've got, you know, Christmas Day ESPN on because that's normal. <laughs> And I read the crawl, and what is the first thing I see on the crawl? Reggie White dies of a heart attack at 40-whatever years old. That same day? That same day. So, and in my mind, it happened, like, when I opened it. Like it, Wow. Like, I, obviously, you could look up when he died, and that's what year it was. But, like, 
Oh, he died the day you opened that gift? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like within really? within like an hour. At, you, he died within an hour of you being like, what the heck to him? Yeah. And like getting kind of mad at like him. Like I feel like I am So linked. did you watch the video? No. <laughs> <laughs> Never watched it. Wow. Speaking of respect, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Man, so I grew up in Maryville, which we pronounce it Maryville, Tennessee. Or Merville, depending on which side you're from. But um, Alcoa and Maryville are kind of like twin cities. And Reggie lived in Alcoa. Ah, that's And cool. so I actually saw Reggie, like, I didn't know him or anything. I mean, I met him one time or whatever, but I saw him all the time. He had a house over there. Dude. So that was an interesting that's great. thing. Would you be interested in a VHS of him leading people in prayer? Because Andrew has one. You know, knowing how I my bet you Andrew doesn't stuff. have have it uh, either. I, knowing how my parents save stuff, I bet it's in the cellophane somewhere. <laughs> you never opened it? No, because uh, uh, nephew of the year. That was probably the key to him living. If you'd have just uh, opened it, well, he probably, didn't really he probably made it. Yep. Put it all together that he was like this. Um, I mean, obviously the video would have contained the evidence here, but like he was like this minister and this great, yes, you know, figure and stuff. And it was probably like don't a act really like you cool, watched it. Like. Don't tell us about all the things no, that were on this thing you never watched. Don't act like saying, you didn't finish reading the paragraph on the back, <laughs> synopsizing it. I don't even remember the title. I just know it was Reggie White. Minister, and the Minister of Defense. Um, the VHS stood for a very holy sportsman in that instance. There's a great, uh, there's a great like inside uh, the NFL. I think it episode. was a video something. I actually don't know. Something. <laughs> <laughs> There's a great Inside the NFL episode on Chris Carter. If you know, remember who Chris Carter is yeah. from the Minnesota uh, Vikings. I watched Governor of New Jersey. The Yes, Chris Christie. Life. Oh. Yes. Chris Carter. He would be like he'd be like talking to people. Oh, is that Agent Carter? About Jesus in between. So he's he's a wide receiver. So there'd be a cornerback like blocking him or you know, guarding him. He'd run his route or whatever. And then he'd be talking about him or talking to him on the way back to the huddle, being like this is not who you are, man. This is just what you do. This is not who you are. You wow. know, and then and then there would be like some uh, player hurt on the field and he would say stuff like this. He'd be like, devil, you get off this field. Sickness, get off this field. In the name of Jesus, get off this field. Whatever, like that. Wow. I was like, because you know, inside the NFL, like, well, uncensor uh, whatever they were saying, or used to in any way, it would, it would show, it would list, give you sounds of the game yeah. and you would hear what they were saying on, you know, whether it was bad or swearing or whatever. So it was like this one episode of him, like saying all these crazy things That's like that. Like, very yeah. Pentecostal, very, I say crazy. Jeez. I don't mean crazy as in like, he's crazy. I mean like just awesome. for you to hear them, yeah. it's crazy that you never he hear or think a football player would be saying these things, you know, on the field. Uh, so I always just had a lot of a lot of respect for him, unlike anchormen or women for not thinking that anchormen's funny. But Chris Carter, I have respect for if you know for doing that. That's great. All right, now it's time for us to um, figure out the best spiritual um, lead-in intro lines for being on the football field. So like, oh, you're a wide receiver. Well, did you know that wide is the path that leads to destruction, and many find it. Um, let me tell you about Jesus. Oh. Um, it there, there's also many tales of the um, running back slid <laughs> Christian. Uh, oh, also, the man. quarterback slid for a first down, <laughs> which is only a first down in the devil's eyes. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. Yeah. Oh, um, you know, the ultimate end zone is the kingdom of heaven. All right. Well, <laughs> when Jesus touched down on earth, the world was changed forever. It's <laughs> good. Uh, one day we will all walk through the golden uprights. <laughs> oh wait, that's good. That's good. No, um, that's. Uh, I mean, dang it! Do they walk through those? <laughs> they pull them down sometimes. Oh, like when uh, Kentucky Jesus, beats Tennessee. But, <laughs> that does happen there. Uh, Jesus picked six disciples, then he picked six more. <laughs> yes. Wow, two in one. That's good. Very good. Um, do not cause your brother to fumble. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really good. Look. This is all not rehearsed. Yeah. S safety is found in the arms of Jesus. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Nice. Right, right, right. <laughs> Why does the pastor always have to make an extra point? Oh, I thought you said passer. Oh, he makes me to lie down with Green Bay passers. <laughs> The shield of faith intercepts the arrows of the enemy. Oh, yes. How true that is. It's so true, mm. guys. It's so true. Mm. 
Um, there's more. <laughs> um, let's see. Why do you worry? Even the ravens of the air have all that they need. That's the message version. And the dolphins of the Miami. <laughs> he talks about sparrows in the Bible. You know, ravens, sparrows, eagles. Hey, you will just... soar on the wings of eagles. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we know is. which team Isaiah is rooting for. <laughs> Yo, uh, after church, we got this uh, potluck. It's going to be the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh man, there is nothing better than a Josh O cameo. That is the Josh O cameo yep. of the night. Yep. Oh man. And then after you eat that, you'll take the Browns to the Super Bowl. Ah, classic. Classic. <laughs> I didn't make that one. Up. You know, <laughs> we are terrible at transitions. Yep. That's what Speaking I Speaking of segues, we uh, played some shows today. <laughs> No, we did play a really fun show tonight, though, that I wanted to talk about here because we didn't really all talk about it afterwards because it's a very unique show. It's a private show, which we do one or two of a year, full band. We do private acoustic shows fairly often, but playing a full band show in a private setting is, is rare. But the story of this guy who brought us in is cool because he built, and this is giving hints to all of you out there that this will work if you do it. <laughs> build. If you build it. If you build it, build we will come. Dreams. Yes. He, this guy and his family built this big garage, man cave, fully finished, uh, cool hang spot with a loft and a little spiral staircase. But they built it for the purpose of having Disciple come and play. Like that was the incentive, which to us was like, that's crazy. And yet, we went last year, and we just went back. No, we actually played twice this year. Was it I, this I looked, year? We played. We played there in June. It was not that long ago. Whoa. Well, my mind's blown. Yeah. Yes. Well, it was a lot of fun because it's super tight. There's no stage. It's just on the floor for about 50 people, and it, it was just a fun show. Oh, it's about a normal disciple show. <laughs> <laughs> just about par for the course, of course. But, I don't know. I had fun. I tried some new tricks. I hit Joey's <laughs> cymbals. I tried to toss you a pick mid, but I think you recognized what I was trying to do, like, after the fact. Yep, right after. Yeah, I was like, I'm going to try to toss it to you and see well, if you can catch it. it kind of slid across Joey's cymbal, I think, too. Yeah. So, I, I'm I, not the best quarterback. I, I tried the knee thing twice and couldn't, didn't do, couldn't it. do it. So you can do it in practice, but not in the... Well, I didn't have a guitar on, and I, I underestimated how much guitar is over here that I had to hold over here and then do it. What I just did you do it with it. your left knee? Well, then I couldn't, like, hold a chord. So my idea was, like, hit a chord. Oh, well, that's even harder, right? Unless I... Unless I do this. I wish you guys could see how dumb this is. <laughs> I believe in you. Cord innated. Yeah. Um, I also handed Joey the mic at the end, and he said some nice things during okay. the trash can. When y'all when y'all scream <laughs> in my microphone, just so you know, I have me turned way up in my ears, and somehow you guys scream louder than I do. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. I don't know zero how you do it. Practice. Yeah. I think it's just that you get right in the mic. Whenever I scream, I, I hold the mic away a little bit, yeah. maybe. We'll yeah. remember that. And no, please oh. don't, well. because I love my head being blown off by you screaming in the ears. Every time you do it, I literally uh, just a, a little poop comes out of of my butt every time they do that. And I just I have to go change my diaper every time because <laughs> it scares me to death. And they're like, ah! Well, yeah. I feel like you never see it either. Like you never see us like getting the mic. It's always just like never. Yeah, you never know that it happens. Never know. Yeah. Never know that it happens. My, my screaming was not aimless tonight. I was about to say, I, what I you? Was, yeah, I, mine was just full of words of affirmation. I was just oh, like, that's wonderful. I started going, "Great show, guys! Great, well done, fellas! Why fellas, don't you go well ahead and done. hold the Great mic back job. here and do and and do it the way you actually did it? Pretend you're smashing the symbols and the trash cans going, ah, go! Well done, fellas! That's that a is great not show. accurate. <laughs> you want to try it again? Yeah. Okay. Well done, fellas. That was a great show. <laughs> you sandbagging son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> you trolled him. All right. Y'all want to have a serious conversation? 
Trump or do you want to wait? Kim Jong Un on we Twitter. Uh, well, all right, let's have that one. Go ahead, that's a good one. So today, read, read, read Trump's Twitter. Account. My phone's in my my bunk over there, so I well, can't remember. Well, pause it. Okay. Hit hit Google and type in Trump oh. Kim Jong Un. Tweet tweet. How do you spell Un? <laughs> Poyang. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, aren't the Olymp the next Olympics are in Pyongyang, is that right? There's no way. Heck no. In There's South no South Korea. Way. Right? That'd be Seoul. That's Seoul. Seoul. <gasps> You're right. Yeah. Right. Sorry. There's absolutely no way the international community would ever allow North Korea to yeah. host the Olympics. Oh my gosh. No way. Uh, to any of our North Korean subscribers, we apologize. <laughs> any of you in the DMZ? Yeah, do we, though? So, uh, without weighing in politically whatsoever, this is a real text submitted by a real president. Of the free world. Of, yeah. I'm quoting in the air. The yeah. free... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, he said, why would Kim Jong-un insult me by... I was really hoping that you were just going to go, yeah, this is no no bias whatsoever. I was really hoping that <laughs> Kim Jong-un... <laughs> <laughs> I read it in a stupid voice. No, you want me to do the voice? No. <laughs> oh, please. Oh, please do it. Drew does the best impressions. <laughs> the best voices. Why would Kim Jong-un insult me by calling me old? When he knows I would never call him short and fat? Oh, well, I try. I try so hard to be his friend. And maybe someday that will happen. <laughs> oh, my God. Is it just me, or, okay, if you close your eyes and you listen to Donald Trump talk, I hear Joe Pesci. Nice. I totally Reading hear Joe lines. Pesci. Like, give me some Home Alone lines right now from oh, Joe yeah, Pesci. Yeah. Um, here, uh, yeah, here's the deal, Mav. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, we're hitting Duncan's toy chest. Uh, it's Donald Trump. It's absolutely what Donald Trump. What does he call Trump. them? A Callister House? The, oh, the, the, silver, silver tuna. <laughs> the silver tuna. The silver tuna. I feel like the silver tuna. I feel yeah, like totally a Trump line. Like Donald Trump would totally be like, Russia is the silver tuna of evil. <laughs> <laughs> I would never call him short and fat. Okay, so we've already talked about this. Yeah. Uh, I love this tweet. Whether you like Trump or, or hate him, I love the fact that he either unintentionally or intentionally still called him short and fat while saying I would never call right. him short and fat. Right. So it's in quotes. I think it's hilarious. If we get nuked for it, I will change my opinion <laughs> later. Yeah. But to, to as of right now, I think it's pretty funny. Yeah. On apocalypse banter. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> to Which you, uh, only means revealing. Apocalypse. From the last Just running a, tour bus in the Greek world. Greek word that means to be revealed. So I did not know that. It's, the etymology has changed mm. into becoming this thing that means the last days kind of things. But revelation is actually apocalypto, which means to be revealed. I love edamame. That's great. Is I that didn't sushi? know that. Edamame? You learn something yeah, every day. Sushi. About edamame. Etymology. Edama uh, talk about oh, the edamame okay. of, the of apocalypse. apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, the edam <laughs> to talk about the raw fish. Yes. <laughs> we can talk about that. We all love sushi. No. Andrew doesn't like sushi. I do not like sushi. What's I've, wrong with I've you? tried and Are you from the West Coast where they don't have fresh fish? <sighs> okay. <laughs> Here's the thing about me. From thing. I'm from I was well, wondering two, two what things. the thing yeah, was. Here's my like, biography, uh, literally. I'm from in California this one sentence. and I, I cannot and it's not because I haven't tried it or because I'm closed minded, because I like most foods. The but fact I that I am closed-minded has nothing to do with this. Yeah, I refuse to acknowledge <laughs> that fact. Uh, but no, I don't like sushi and I don't like avocado. Yeah, that's like guacamole. Ah! The, the two most California things other than burritos and In-N-Out, which make up 90% of my diet. Normal. You don't like no nope. avocado? No, I do not like avocados or guacamole. It, they taste... Are you even a true Mexican? They taste... <laughs> I will, I will point out that guac especially avocado and sushi does have a similar cold served cold that's it served cold kind of chewy creamy that's it 
and I, I think that's I hate, probably the uh, food of it. Uh, one certain type of food, and that's it. It's a uh, potato salad, macaroni salad, sushi, avocado, mayonnaise, creamy, cold. Yep. <laughs> there it is, folks. All right, so that's your thing, Josiah. On the other hand, he well, yeah, he's just thing. a liar. <laughs> he's he's literally, and I say this, I say this in in the most loving, like he's my best friend. You know, I say this in a loving. He is a hypocrite when it comes to food. Yeah, <laughs> that's, no, that's what I that's what I was. Getting that's at. that's yeah. basically what it is. It's like it's all made up. Yeah, I hate cheese. I've never I won't that. eat. You've never said you hate cheese. Oh, you said they don't Look like Look at his cheese, face though. right now. He's already like getting defensive about and trying to defend his position. You can't no. defend these positions. But okay, Do you wh- eat- whatever, whatever, I don't know what your feelings are, but you remove cheese from food. You remove cheese, Except- willingly remove cheese from food. Do you Oh, hold on. Do you like cheese at all? I have I had to te- train myself to like cheese in certain instances, but I do not like cheese as a family of food. What did that training look like? <laughs> 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 kind of like Steven Seagal and Hard to Kill whenever he loses his ability to walk and he's coming back and then he's like working out outside oh, like, like, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> Man. You of all people! I thought for sure he would have died the first time in Hard to Kill. <sighs> no, no, that's why it was hard. But so that's also uh, where they wait. got you know like uh, this is the one with Bruce Die Willis, Hard right? from yeah they yeah. got Die Hard so Die Hard ripped Die, off Hard Die to Kill Die Hard to Kill Die Hard to Kill absolutely Die Hard to Kill a Mockingbird Die Hard to Kill a Mockingbird so Josiah's weird thing is cheese but yeah. yet he eats pizza so it doesn't make sense but that's fine. that's fine what are your other things that you don't like you there's a lot of things you don't you don't well, like coconut we're gonna say it's fine I don't know yeah. what it is <laughs> there actually is a lot I I I, I don't com- I don't like send stuff back a lot I usually just like take it off but I don't like mayonnaise <laughs> coconut um mushrooms those are kind I've of the main you send things. a few back well if I'm yeah, moody not in a long time though if I'm not, moody not in a if long it's time. melty cheese if it's like melty cheese then I will for sure send it back oh oh, oh. I thought you just meant in general for cheese but I you'll eat understand. pizza because you order it without myself. cheese so but, if it comes with cheese you right. send it back that's but fine. That's for the fine. first I swear to you the two people in the world before me who didn't like cheese got married and had me and that was my parents and I was homeschooled so I never had like cafeteria food so, growing up, they literally would order from Pizza Hut or CC's or wherever, cheeseless pizza. And so, that's what I knew pizza as for the first uh. 11 years of my life. Then I went to youth group, started going to youth group, and it's like pizza with cheese all over it. And I was like, oh, okay, I've heard that's like one way to eat it. Or I like, eat cheese. see it on the commercials that way. <laughs> and uh, I, just, I just had to because it's ubiquitous. You can't get away from pizza. So... If there's one thing I'll say I'm about I'm going to need a definition of ubiquitous, ubiquitous right now. Come on, um, let's pull it up. I need it right hold now. On, hold on, hold on. Define I- ubiquitous. <laughs> what do I need at Al-Anon to find ubiquitous? I'm at work. My shift ends in 614,978 years. That's what Siri actual said. Actual Siri Actual Siri. Goodness. Hold on, let me see what she says for me. All right. <laughs> That's a shift right there. Definition of ubiquitous. Okay, I found this on the web for is that four. <laughs> is Thanks. that four? All right, All right. Wow. Siri number three. Yep. Unbelievable. Siri, what is the definition of the word ubiquitous? Ubiquitous means present, appearing, or found everywhere. Wow. Third time so how did you use it in a sentence? Pizza is it's, ubiquitous. Is ubiquitous. So, like, pizza no matter, with cheese is ubiquitous. Correct. So no yes. matter where you go, pizza parties, sleepovers, oh, youth group, this, college. This four. right here, this is for you. Thank you. Thank you. It's not, it doesn't quite qualify for Joey's five-syllable word of the day, but it's the next best thing. Mm, Ubiquitosity? (laughs) Joey, what are some of the weird things you don't eat? Weird food things. I know the biggest one. Beans. I hate beans so much. Hate beans. Interesting. Green beans? I love green beans, like Southern Cook green beans. It's like bean-shaped beans, right? Yes, like like pinto beans, lima beans. What about black beans? Hate them. Hate them so much. 
I hate Bane. God, I almost said I hate Banes. What else? I don't like coconut. That's three of us then, huh? That's I don't like pineapple. Yeah, I don't like coconut either. I, I'm not a big fan of coconut. That one, though, I think is a, a more... Um, texture you know, for me. A what? Coconut, I don't like the texture. It's, yeah, I don't, I don't think a lot of texture, people like the, the texture. Texture. <laughs> texture. I don't like to texture anybody. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> and I don't like pineapple. Is that true? I can't get behind yeah, that one. I haven't, I haven't noticed that's that one. That's too bad. Pineapple is great. Now, is you that, gotta have pineapple in Hawaii. Is that a flavor time. thing? A texture thing? Oh, all of it. I just think it's disgusting. Hmm. Interesting. interesting. Even on pizza. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's why when y'all order them Hawaiian pizzas, I'm like, well, guess I'm going to Subway. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You're, Joey's like, how are ye with me not eating this pizza? Because I'm gonna go eat somewhere else. Is that it on the Where, food? Are things? those the three <laughs> southern vowels? Hawaii. 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 You know what? You know what I'll ask you. How are you? Anyway, uh, my food. Uh, I don't eat shrimp. That's but that's not necessarily one you don't like. It's just one you stay away from, right? It's one I stay away from. I I used to eat it all the time, but then I like you know read uh, the Maker's Diet or whatever, and and I don't know how I like you know view shrimp as a bottom feeder and and won't eat it because of that, but will still eat the crap ton of ham and bacon and just be like ah it's fine right. because it's I mean if you don't eat what? bacon, I feel like. You're not an American, yeah. What's and the you. For you're, the shrimp thing? What about the? Why don't you eat shrimp? It's, it's a bottom feeder, so oh. meaning it just you know it eats crap off the bottom floor of the ocean. Plus, it also has a big poop shoot right through the center of the shrimp. So you're like, and that you can see. Some of them are deveined like that. Some yes, them. some of them are deveined. Yeah. Okay, whatever. Anyway. Yeah, don't worry. So, we, we ripped it out right before we <laughs> brought it to you. It's it probably like, didn't get anywhere. Come on, guys. No, this is... No, yeah, I don't I eat can't, shrimp. I can't do that. I don't eat shrimp anymore. It's, shrimp. it's the thought of... Also, I have trouble... I will eat chicken off the bone. I don't mind to do that every once in a while. But I... I instantly feel extremely barbaric when I eat like a chicken breast and I'm like ripping the bones apart to, yeah. to whatever. I always feel very uncomfortable with that and I'm always like, you know, chick I, I wish I had chicken nuggets right now at this Right. <laughs> at yeah, this, they, it's at like this moment. Napoleon Bonaparte over here. Oh, <laughs> history joke. Nice. Just Bonaparte. <laughs> <laughs> one one food that really disgusts me is uh, smokeless tobacco. Which is not a food at all, but <laughs> it's something that you it totally is something that you, you can taste and you know and Are chew, you so to, to speak. Like, snooze or like just dip. Well, uh, chewing tobacco or dip. So let me tell you a quick story about my my mom. So I obviously <laughs> I grew up in East Tennessee. That's the con. That's all the context you need to know right there. Yeah. I grew up in East Tennessee, so I'm playing little league baseball. There's a guy six years old, seven years old, whatever it was. His dad was the coach of the team. He let him dip. Okay, so East Tennessee, So awesome. that is the context that you need to know. So, of course, as a six or seven year old, I'm thinking he's the coolest kid on the world. He's doing an adult thing. He is dipping. All right. So I'm going to my mom every day and I'm like begging her. I'm like, Mom, let me dip. You know, Donnie's dad lets him dip. You know, let, let me dip. So she gets the idea that she's going to take. She's like, OK, son. Just one day she says, I'm, I'm going to let you. There's a guy at work. She worked for Alcoa Aluminum Plant, which Alcoa is actually an acronym with the elemental symbol of AL being aluminum and then COA standing for a company of America. So the city Alcoa is actually an al acronym and the company is Aluminum Company of America. So oh there you go. God. So she worked Dang. at Alcoa. Are you talking about aluminium? <laughs> aluminium, that's right. So she works at Alcoa and she takes me to this guy and says, all right, Kevin, uh, let's say his name's Johnny. Johnny is going to teach you how to uh, dip and chew tobacco. And he's this grown man. I am so freaking pumped. I'm like probably eight or nine years old by this point when she finally decides she's going to let me dip. And she's going to let me be a man. So she takes me to this guy. He says, I've got four tobaccos we're going to try today. We're going to start off with Skull. And then we're going to do some some Red Man and some Levi Garrett. And we're going to top it off with some Copenhagen. I was like, <gasps> This is like the greatest Dang. day of my life, all right? So if anybody knows anything about, about dip or cigarettes or anything like that, what happens is this amazing phenomenon called a buzz. <laughs> now, I am nine years old at this time, and I put skull into my mouth, 
And about 30 seconds later, as a nine-year-old, the room starts spinning out of control. Buzz, light your I <laughs> was buzzing like an alarm clock, okay? Just out of my mind. So he lets me sit there and dip skull for like two minutes or whatever, and he knows what he's doing, all right? He knows exactly what he's doing. There's it, been a plan. Yes, now, he... Were, were you, did you like know how like, to spit or like... Yeah, of, I mean, of course you watch adults like, you know, dip, you instantly know, you know, not to swallow it and spit okay. it out. So we're, you know, we've got our man spit cup and we're doing it all right and so he's like okay his heart right, kevin that's enough of that let's try let's try some red man i mean red man is like the marlboro reds of chewing tobacco okay i mean it's it's the big stuff and he's like he's like all right here you go you know take take your big old whatever so i got this huge <laughs> wad of red man in my mouth okay my mouth is on fire burning this stuff tastes like literally it's the worst thing i've ever tasted in my entire life but i mean it's you know, who knows what it tastes like as an adult, but I was nine. Right. And it was really bad. And so then he's, we do that for a minute, you know. And of course, I'm trying to do it. I remember getting this throbbing headache. So now, <laughs> like, like the skull gave me this buzz. And then now Redman has given me a headache, okay. So then we're going to do Levi Garrett. So we do that for a minute. Then Copenhagen, which is even stouter and stronger than skull, I put it in it, and Copenhagen is like seriously, seriously wintergreen. So like, you know, um, you know, extra chewing gum that's wintergreen or whatever. It's like that times 20. You know, you put it in and it's just like... I never understood why they, I mean, I guess the concept is like they got to make your breath smell like something else. <laughs> well, it's but just this flavor. It's just, it's just a flavor, so really. So much yeah. of like a pretty good smell, so much with a mixed with an awful smell <laughs> so i put that in at this point i am literally intoxicated drunk on smokeless tobacco oh. and he knows what he's doing he's like he, he's like you want to you want to go over here and it, you know and, and i'm like i don't feel good you know so i start hurling right and i start i start puking and we end up you know going to the water fountain or whatever and and he's like, so, so do you? He's like, do you do you want some more? And I'm like, no. And he goes, he goes, do you ever? Do you, you think you'll ever want to uh, dip or chew again? I was like, no, I don't. I don't think I ever want to do this again. So my mom, you know, was over there just like snickering the entire time. Is it awesome, but yet evil, mother? I must say. Just like the well, Sandlot, dude. That scene yeah. from the Sandlot when they go in the Ferris you, you can to You can thank your mother for every one of those beautiful white pearly teeth you got. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks. Well, the funny thing is, is my friend, and I'll totally out him. It's fine. I don't think he would care, but my, my friend Chance, he would uh, he, he dipped all the time. And he, so he thought it was funny because, see, like my body like adapted this gag reflex to dip oh. from doing that. So he thought it was funny that it would make me throw up. So he would always try. He like, he, he'd be like, hey, maybe this time it won't make you throw up or whatever. Oh. So as an adult, I would like, I would I'd say, okay, well, maybe this time it won't make me throw up. And I mean, within two minutes, <laughs> I would be tossing every wow. grocery I put in my mouth, oh my just God. hurling all over the place. Like seven times he talked me into that. That's how stupid I am. <laughs> like, I was just like, okay, maybe this time or whatever. And, and you're and, like, yeah, I need this. Yeah. I need this thing that will give me cancer. Yeah, no, dude. It's <laughs> literally, literally, it, if I did it right now, I, I would not be able to sit here i'd get instantly get a buzz and instantly start throwing up all over the place i just imagine you singing our songs with that thing in you be real though <laughs> be real though when you were nine you really just wanted to be the kid on the baseball team with the nickname the little dipper <laughs> oh. wait i thought you said that was your nickname it was. Because <laughs> then he would, be the you would hit the ball to the, the stars. Team. Oh, yeah. My, <laughs> now, my nickname in Little League was uh, the guy that, oh, that guy that doesn't play? <laughs> that guy that sits on the bench? That was my nickname right over there. Uh, my, I had a nickname in Little League. They only said it when I'd go up to bat. And everybody would just say, oh, crap. <laughs> my, my nickname was You Suck <laughs> Not him yeah. again My nickname was Find Your Gloves <laughs> We're going back to the outfield Oh my gosh It's going to be back awesome. to defense in three swings Get ready Alright so 
I was going to take it serious a minute ago. Oh, yeah. We're now, we're now back to it. Back to it. Oh, Joe, I thought that was it. Joey has had a pretty interesting week. We've been um, on this last tour. We talked about a lot of things on tour, uh, about tons of things, cutting, suicide, addiction, uh, sexual sin, uh, bitterness, and we talk about it every night from the stage. And Joey was like, I've been listening to you, <laughs> listening to you every night, and there's some people like, that I need to forgive in my life. And like he did probably one of the coolest things that you know anyone can do. Because a lot of times bitterness is one of those things where you don't really think it's an issue. You think you're like there's people in your life that you're mad at or that you know did you wrong or whatever. And it's just basically something that is just a part of your story, but you actually don't ever really consider that you're bitter towards them or you hate that person or things like that. It's just something we just naturally don't consider well, I think it, I, I've been I've thought about it so I, I think you talking about it I feel like it's one of those things where you take a it, you almost see it as like you have this right almost I feel like you have like I have this right now to feel this way and that is the balance of the action that was done to me is now this that I just hold and now we're like even it's not it doesn't make sense it's a it's a warped mentality but like I feel like that's what it is. Like you feel like you have a right, so you don't consider it as like this wrong that you have or this like yeah sin or whatever. It's like no, like that is well within my my rights as a human being because they did this to me and I have now this. You know. So Joey had this really cool thing that he did. You know that I'm like super proud of him for for you know going to some people that he's held some stuff against and actually just sit down to him and just kind of aired it and and. Um, we were yeah. talking about it, and I asked him if it was okay if we talked about it in Bus Banner, and he said yeah. So yeah. I was going to let him let him roll with it because I thought it was such a cool thing. It Start was, from the top. It was definitely a freeing thing. Uh, you know, <clears throat> as you've probably heard on this podcast, <clears throat> I'm not a fan of megachurch, <laughs> and uh, still I'm not. I think megachurch is super stupid, um, <laughs> and, uh, and that's probably not going to change. But um, a lot of that stemmed from – uh, broken relationships at the church that I was a part of for years and um, not to even get into all that because it's really nobody's business um, but a a situation happened I guess last week uh, that prompted me getting like super super pissed off and talking to the band like these guys are like my best friends so you know, over a group text, I was uh, pretty passionate and uh, pretty pretty expl- angry. Uh, angry. Yeah. Well, why yeah. don't you tell them? Like, I was gonna say, like, what's the context? Like, what in terms of years? Like, when were you? When was this like going on? You know, what led to all? Like, you know, what was the timeline? Kind of just because you were in you it, mean, you were in it, and you consider you, now you talk about yeah. it. And you're like, no, I was fully in, like, like committed to it, and like, yeah, kind of blinded to it. I got. I got into that whole scene in 2008, I believe, and I didn't get out until 2014, maybe right into 2015. It was like another time that I I played music there, um, and I'm talking like I got out of a cult, <laughs> but I think I actually survived a cult, believe it or not. Um, and so, anyways, that uh, this was this was a long time of short for be, culture. Yeah, right. culture. Yeah. Oh, we want to create a culture of excellence around here. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Um, anyways, um, long for cult. Yeah. So, uh, so years of me being blinded by this uh, celebrity church culture, which if you're a part of it, freaking run, uh, get out of it. You save yourself a lot of pain and heartache. Um, so anyways, uh, over the years, uh, I went, I went through that and I started getting more of a 30,000 foot view rather than an on ground view of what was going on. And I just started realizing and started thinking for myself and, uh, and developing a backbone, uh, that it was just like, you know what? I don't, I don't support this type of, of culture or whatever. So anyways, um, there was a lot of a lot of hurt and a lot of uh, a lot of things that happened to me while I was there um, that I carried around for years because I never felt like I could confront the people um, that caused that um, and 
I basically just carried it around for years and was a very, very hurt, angry, bitter person. Um, that led me to also hurt people. Um, I've, you know, I can't, I can't sit here and say that all the hurt has been done to me, you know, because I'm a very imperfect person and, you know, I've, I've caused probably just as much hurt, if not more hurt, um, than those people. So by no means do I, uh, count myself as much better than them, but this was all unresolved bitterness that I was carrying around that was just making me an angry person and affecting every area of my life um you know i struggle with depression and anxiety and that would make that even worse um so a, a situation happened just last week where i ran into someone from this uh from this church that i was involved with and um a thing was said to me that really made me angry and i talked to the guys about it and that prompted kevin to actually call the church and get this person to apologize to me and I didn't have this person's number so I couldn't tell them you know uh, how they hurt me so anyways this person actually contacted me apologized to me apologized to my my father who was there and heard what was said which I had a lot of respect for and I think he also called Kevin and uh, apologized to him as well and uh, so that made me feel really good but that whole situation made me everything just come to an head to a head to where I was like, okay, I'm tired of being mad. I'm tired of like holding all this stuff in. There is a person that I know I need to talk to face to face and tell them, Hey, this is how everything made me feel, you know, give them a chance to maybe explain what was going on at the time, you know, whatever. Like I, I wasn't going in guns blazing. Um, and, uh, and I was able to basically because of that situation happening, I reached out to this person because I've listened to Kevin talk on this last tour about giving up that bitterness and everything and, and all that. And I was like, man, that's that's 100% for me. And uh, I contacted this person. I was like, hey, we need to talk. I've got a lot of bitterness, resentment towards you. I want, I want to sit down with you face-to-face -face over a meal, talk everything through, and ultimately let this go. And we were able to talk and we got through everything and I was able to look this person in the eyes and say, I forgive you. And honestly, like all my bitterness and anger towards people that were involved with that has totally lifted. Does not was mean- it like, Was it like instant or like the next morning you woke up and you were just kind of like- No, it was like the minute I walked out of that restaurant, I was just like, I'm not pissed off anymore. Like, <laughs> I, maybe I don't agree with the culture or like the church, and I don't, system, I don't, I don't have yeah. to. I don't, no, I, don't yeah. I don't have to agree with the system. And I think that there's a lot of issues inside that system that need to be talked about, and there needs to be a conversation that starts about how these rock star pastors use tithe money to fly around on private jets all these places. You know, like I, I just think there's so many different like issues that people don't need to be afraid and be blinded by this this system um so that's why i still say it's stupid but <laughs> that's the system and but the people that i was holding a grudge against man i was able to let it go and uh it's freed me up a whole lot um so that was i probably rambled way too much no that was fantastic that. i think oh, it's it's awesome how, how have you felt like since then like you know do you it, has it like affected um just how you wake up, how you view, you know, because it's something you've carried a, around for a while. Yeah. You know, does it, how do you, do you feel different on a day to day since then? You know, um, I, I haven't given it, I haven't given those people any thought where it used to be, you know, like it, 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 people could probably relate with, re relate to me. If you're mad at someone, I, I know you've said this before, but I have totally had imaginary fights and uh, verbal assaults, either Fan running, fantasies, yeah, yeah, fantasies, like yeah. either like just telling them off, for yeah, just telling them or, off, yeah. like if I see this person, oh man, this yeah. is not going to be good. Yeah. And the thing, the thing is, is like when I actually saw that person was and sat down and was like, let's resolve this. It didn't go anything how my mind pictured that it right. would go, you know. Yeah. Um, but as far as affecting me day to day. I was gonna say it sounds like maybe that's the like the, the awesome part is that you're not like thinking about like it a lot like it's just kind of like it's yeah. lifted it's not it's not a problem for your mind anymore so it's right. like the fact that it's not coming up in your in your spirit mm -hmm. is actually like 
the, the, the resolution, I feel like. Absolutely. And it, it's definitely left a scar on me as far as, like, I think the effect it's left on me is I have a hard time with church culture still, um, just anywhere, because I'm not, I'm kind of easing my way back into being part of a, uh, I guess, the corporate church or whatever. Um, my church has mainly come through uh, just having community around me as far as friends who love the Lord that we can talk about real stuff. Uh, being on the road, obviously, with you guys, you know, that definitely I, that feels like my church and all that Pastor stuff. Pastor Josiah. But, yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah, yeah. Deacon Drew. The yep. shepherdess. <laughs> yep. Yeah, the, and, uh, the, the, the confessional box in the back lounge has been huge for me. <laughs> I mean, that's Car- a, Cardinal yeah. Kevin. That's yeah. a big confession yeah. box back there. Yeah. yeah. So... so I think it's cool for several reasons. One being the fact that, like you said, this was all kind of sparked by this incident that on the surface was like, dude, it, you were so mad and livid. It, it and was like, an it was like yeah, it was dropped. like in, in the moment, it was this horrible thing. And you were like, you know, processing it. But within 48 hours, you know, it, like, yeah, it happened. I, I can't remember what day. It, it was less than a week. I know I just, that. It's it was just, the next day. It's just a really cool oh. example of the Lord, like, just, you know, oh, in, yeah. introducing a situation in a way that it wouldn't seem, you know, yeah. uh, feasible. Well, the, the incident itself happened, and I, I don't think I even talked to you guys about it until, like, three days later because okay. I, I let it, like, okay. fester, and that's why I was so... Yeah. That group text is not safe for work so, so i yeah. so i think I that's feeling, really cool so you know that it was like it, it could have just been that isolated thing that yeah. was just another brick on that wall of, of bitterness yeah um but instead that was the catalyst that you yeah, know dude, and i was able to have two great conversations um one with a person that i never thought i would need to have a conversation with yeah and another person that i knew for years i needed to have that conversation with and I was always scared of it for some reason, but I guess over over time, like I, I gained that backbone, and also the Lord was just kind of like just kept putting on me, just like it's gonna be fine. Mm-hmm. Like go in there, have the conversation, awesome. be be you, and you know love people how you know how to love, and definitely say what's on your heart. Mm-hmm. You know, like I mean, I'm sure I could have done some, done and said some things better, but it's just. You know, it's I just look at it all as a growing process. Like the next time I go through this, because I am sure before the day I die, there's going to be someone else that hurts me and I'm pissed off at that I need to talk to. Mm-hmm. And now I will know. Okay, I can take what I did last time, all the good things, and put it into this situation. And it always has a great outcome. Yeah. Um, staying bitter, it just rips apart relationships. It rips apart families. It rips apart yourself like you're hurting nobody but yourself and i was hurting myself for a long time well and too like you know when so. you, you, people struggling with depression and anxiety i mean how much of that could possibly be attached to those instances or how much Absolutely. is that possibly attached to you holding on to it for so long you yeah know? yeah I, I i just got sick of just walking around like i mean i i consider myself to be a nice and loving person but i just got sick of walking around just being like I don't know. I, I've never never been in a fight with anybody, but I felt just in this fight or flight mode all the time, and yeah. it just constantly made my mind just so hazy and foggy, basically. You know? So it's what like, this all ties into as well is what we've seen on this tour. Like you're talking about, kind of what you've been. You're, you know, Kevin. Kevin normally before each tour will kind of come up with or be inspired into a, a new kind of talk for the tour that will kind of take place at some point during the set and usually ends up in an altar call of some sort but this this particular tour has been really cool because yeah like he said we've kind of been opening it up to pray about a number of things whether you're saved or not saved know jesus don't know jesus um and like we've seen it's incredible how the ratio because he'll he'll ask people to raise their hands if they're struggling with this 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 everyone's eyes are closed so we assume it's mostly you know honest and people are are being real and bitterness is usually at least double whatever the next one is i think as far as hands going up it's normally the biggest uh issue that people raise their hands to say i want to pray about this uh and it beats out the next one by at least twice as much um and that's something that i don't i mean i didn't anticipate that i don't know if you did kev but like that was really incredible to, to see because the first couple of nights it's like wow that's really a heavy wow. hitter and yeah. then by the end of the tour it's like for sure every night 
the biggest one. Yeah, man. It's, um, it's inevitable. I mean, like life. I mean, there are going to be people that hurt you, and you are going to hurt plenty of people. Yeah. And I think, I think at the end of all this, um, you know, I I've been reading a book that I highly recommend to everyone. Uh, it's called "What's So Amazing About Grace" by Philip Yancey. And he was going through, I mean, basically it takes you through what God's grace looks like and what, what it is. And he quoted the C.S. Lewis quote that really, really like started changing the perspective in my mind on forgiveness and letting stuff go. Where it was just basically like uh, it said, to be a Christ follower means to forgive the inexcusable in others because Christ has forgiven the inexcusable in you. And that was where it was just like, when I started looking at all the stuff that I have done and that I have been forgiven of, that I have not only been forgiven by God, by I've been forgiven by human beings for, mm-hmm. um, how in the world could I hold unforgiveness towards someone else? It's like, it's kind of like the, the story in the Bible where, you know, you got, you know, the guy with five talents, two talents that took it and wait. I'm an idiot. No, no, you, you're on the is right that, track. That's right. Different, well, different story, same idea. Hold it's on. about the guy with the debt, right? Yeah, the guy with the debt. Big uh, large debt. Yeah, yes. the big large debt, and he is forgiven, and then he goes and finds someone. Small debt. Uh, yeah. yeah, with a small debt, and has him thrown in prison. You yep. know, it's like it's like, dude, you know, I can't, I can't be that guy. Because yeah. when I read that, I'm like, this guy's a freaking <laughs> butthole. You know, I don't want to be that butthole. Yeah. yeah, not me, man. I think it's, I think yeah. So I also think it's super cool, just that. We can like, it's it's funny to. I'm sure people don't think about this. The thought that we in the band up on stage, you know, we go through getting crap. ready, and well, <laughs> just that, but also like we're being ministered to like, yeah, during the shows as well. You know what I mean? Which is really cool. I know even tonight you were saying like I've got something on my mind right now. That's, you know, as I'm saying this, I'm, I'm thinking about this thing that I gotta, you know, pray about and like that ministered to you you know however long ago on this tour and, and i've definitely had moments yeah. like that during certain talks and it's just like whoa it's funny because by, like when kevin's talking i i usually go off the drums and sit behind our our cabs if you've been to our show the the cabs are the ones that show the led video content and he was getting people to raise their hands for different things and every time every night when he would say bitterness i was back there i was like raising your hands just literally like raising my hand just That's sitting awesome. there by myself because i was like Lord, I know you see this hand, and I'm very bitter. <laughs> I don't know what to do about it. And I think it just took that situation happening, that one instance, to yeah. get me to finally just be like, I'm sick of this, you, me, let's meet up so I can freaking forgive you. <laughs> you, know, like, you know, so. Super cool. <laughs> there's, there's definitely one person out there that I'm going to have to seek him out at some point. He's a guy, he was the quarterback of the football team in middle school. <laughs> Really? Who picked on me relentlessly and made fun of me relentlessly and was one of the ones that said, made fun of me in my freshman year of high school, made fun of me after a talent show. And I'm like, I know that I just need to tell him either I forgive him or beat him with a baseball bat. I need to either do one of those two things. You're talking about the fantasies that you There's a healthy balance of both. (laughs) It's like, hey... Listen, we need to talk, but can I beat you with a baseball bat first yeah. before I forgive you? Because <laughs> talk about the fantasies. Like I, I always fantasize. Like if I were to meet him, it's going to be one of the two. Which yeah. one is yeah. it going to well, be? Well, if you beat him up, then you can just forgive each other. Have a big forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wins. <laughs> now that's interesting to me because if I remember, remember correctly, your other story about a quarterback is that when you were in high school, maybe the quarterback who was the popular kid befriended you. And became your best friend. And he's the one that dethroned that guy and put him on the bench. The bully that made fun of me wow. got benched for my new best friend, the new quarterback of the football team, who's still my friend, who we were just texting yesterday. He actually came over to my house, and we watched some Netflix like three days ago in the that's middle of the day. So awesome. that's, yeah, that's a, that's a true story. So I always felt a little vindication when I looked over there, and I saw him on the bench, and I'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> You know, whatever, and then my, you know, my best friend out there actually being the quarterback, play. Reggie White. Reggie White got it all going, baby. Yeah. Thank you, Reggie. Full circle. Reggie. Reggie. Thank White. you, Reggie. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, Andrew. So, who are you mad at? Um, I don't want to talk about it, but I'll probably be having a meeting like that soonish with really? somebody. Yeah. Oh, this is for real. 
Oh yeah. Oh, I was just you know who it is. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So yeah, I, I don't want to say anything beyond that, but he's ready. He's ready. By you time. guys having this conversation, the wheels are turning my head. Cause, That's yeah, why he's been silent over there. He's yeah. been it's like, oh man, this is the thing, things I'm gonna I've, have yeah, to say. Had... Yeah, t- tune in for the sequel to this segment. <laughs> <laughs> so even oh. even. Uh, even uh, guys in Christian rock bands, we yeah. have to we have to live out the gospel up here. We can't just yeah, it's really annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's really annoying. Stop, leave us alone, God. Are we doing enough? Just said no, doesn't, Kevin. Just said doesn't mean that, do you? What do you mean that? <laughs> like, yeah, it's annoying. Do you mean that it's annoying? Oh, um, well, hold on. Let me let me stop the recording. Yeah, it's super annoying. Uh, <laughs> <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> I didn't know he was annoyed. Did you know he was annoyed? Dude, I'm pretty bitter oh. at him for being annoyed right now. <laughs> I've been yeah. holding it in for the last five seconds. Yeah, it's really yeah. The person I me. was referencing may or may not be in this moving room right now. Oh, oh snap. my God, snap. Chris! Is it me? <laughs> <laughs> is it me, Lord? The one that I dip my <laughs> is the oh, one who has betrayed me. We have some homemade bread here. This. We can we can yeah. Uh, I said may not as well. So yeah, that's true. It's true. That's all, it's the, you're can. talking about a C.S. Lewis quote. The, 50, the one C.S. Lewis quote about bitterness uh, is my favorite. I, th- I think I said it around the campfire tonight after the show. Is uh, he said uh, he said bitterness is like drinking a poison and waiting for your enemy to die. Yeah. And I've always thought that that was the yeah. coolest thing because uh, you know when you're bitter, it's because. You're mad at somebody else, or somebody did something wrong to you, but the bitterness actually only hurts you. And they don't even know. They don't, they don't even know about it. Yeah, this guy that I'm totally yeah. like, still, you know, harbouring some things they from middle school. About it. He yeah. has. I am nobody to him. He yeah. could care less about me. Doesn't think about me ever. Yeah. And I've given him all of this time, you know, all the all these years, and it's you know drinking this poison. Yeah. You know, and um, that's why I said, I mean, I just can't wait and hope that I can yeah. beat the crap out of him soon so I can get it out of my head. <laughs> Drew, Drew what you just said just made my anxiety shoot through the roof. If I have done something to offend you, brother, <laughs> I'm <am> so sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. You're kidding, right? Huh? You're kidding, right? About half. Okay. <laughs> well, that, that makes sense because it said may or may not. Yeah, that's half true. Half and half. No, no, but for real, is, for real, Joe, it, it, it is obviously it is nobody in this band I'll or on this bus. This yeah, you gotta tune in next week <laughs> to find out. <laughs> yeah. I, it reminded me of a prank of you saying, you, yeah, I'm not gonna tell you. It reminded me of a prank that I won't say who this person was but that we were on tour with, but I'll just say that this person is insecure about their hair or whatever, and they, they, they wear a hat. So my prank oh. to this person was that I, I said, I'm going to, I told him before the show, I said, I'm going to take your hat off in the middle of the show. On stage, yeah. On stage. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk over. My prank to you guys tonight is I'm going to take your hat off in the middle of the show. And he was like totally anxiety ridden, just like, please don't, man. Please don't. Please. I said, no, I'm going to do it. This person is also like the sweetest, kindest, like... <laughs> quietest person ever <laughs> does not deserve any yeah. of it <laughs> and i'm totally Least deserving i'm of totally this being a huge jerk to him and just like scaring him out to death i'm like i'm gonna take your hat off it at that's gonna be my prank to you and uh and he's like please please don't so what i do is like walk over to the side of the stage and i stand next to him and i'm just looking at him i'm like i'm getting ready to come out and of course i just keep doing it like song after song after song and then never do it so the <laughs> prank the prank was me just standing over yeah. there pretending like i was going to do it making him freak out the whole show it's a pretty good prank and that and one sure. that didn't disrupt the show or the audience had no idea you yeah, know right I'm pretty sure that guy sleeps with his hat on. <laughs> Actually, I think he really did. Like, I think he really he was did in our bu- in the bunk. Um, I think he really did because, yeah. like, I n- I never saw him like roll out in the morning and like you know whatever. Like, yeah. he was just always dressed. With it's a impressive. Hat on. It's a, it's an impressive commitment, yeah. and we love him, and we will continue to not say his name. <laughs> um, no, I mean, there's yeah, yeah there's been like 45 people <coughs> they've ridden on this bus. That's so true. Nobody. Is nobody is none the wiser. <laughs> Speaking of our bus, who is the wisest of all? We, nuns? we need to. Eh, yes, that's true. Uh, Joshua, son of Nun, um, the only motherless person in the Bible. Um, we are going way long, so I'm just gonna 
segue into we have the rest of our Long Live the Rebellion tour finishing up in January and February a little bit, maybe? And then City Rock Fest in the spring, we're really excited about. There's some fresh blood in the wings. That sounds so vicious. Yes, it's rock and roll. Letter Black, As We Ascend, The Protest, Wolves at the Gate are all going to be part of it, as well as Seven Day Slumber and Spoken. So and us. we're excited. And Disciple. I'm yes. Excited. I'm going to be playing uh, some drums for the Letter Black as well. Very cool. It's very cool. On the that part of the run. Every show. Ooh, every show. Ooh, every show. Which drums? Mmm. Oh. Mm. The round ones. Do you, ah. Do you need all of them for the Letter Black set or just some of them? Be you, honest. Just, just, a, just the kick and snare. <laughs> no symbols. I, t- I told I told Mark, I was like, hey man, I can play for you, but it's only kick and snare. Yep. Right. Yep. You have to pay me extra for hi hat. So yeah. I dare you. In Tom's I dare you to do just kick and snare one night. I bet you could pull it off and make it sound decent. Have you seen Mark? <laughs> His muscles are big and he's scary. And he wears a bulletproof vest. <laughs> yes. Does he really? In the promo shots. Huh. It's pretty cool. Interesting. Um,. So yeah, we got a lot of cool stuff on the horizon. We have a lot of me. other cool stuff that we can't really talk about, but things that are possibly happening or not happening that could be exciting or could be really boring. Record down! So uh, just, you know, tune in to find out more about that. Um, things are just things are just in the works. The cogs are a cogging. <laughs> and uh, and soon, uh, it'll be Christmas. Ah! Christmas. Wait, we gotta get through Thanksgiving Santa loves first. You. <laughs> I love it when you say a joke like you did just now. Like cogs are a cog, in it, and I can watch your face go from like the hopeful anticipation <laughs> of this joke landing, and then as you finish the last syllable of the word, your face just completely changes to what did I just do? What? <laughs> <laughs> like what have I become? And like worthy. you're yeah. you're like you're just being so. <laughs> Hopeful and then so hard on yourself. Yeah, it's a it's a vicious. But I just process. I'm entertained by the range of emotions in such a short time. I appreciate that, and that was a good description for the listeners who don't have the uh, convenience of video of my face right now. So we'll have to upload some of that later. Um, you want to end it with our, our Santa Claus talk the other night? Sure. Right. Oh, yeah. So anybody under the age of 10 needs to leave the room right now. Yeah, if you're one of our uh, family listening groups and you're on a road say, trip. Leave the room. Like I just picture the whole turn family around a radio, you know, like listening to our bus <laughs> banner, right. like around the fire. Turn this podcast off if you're under the age of 10. Yeah. Dude, you need, to put, you need to put Christmas music like a filler right here. <laughs> just yeah. for like five well. seconds. So obviously, Disciple, I wrote I back when I was... I bells ringing, <laughs> ting, ting, tingling to... <laughs> ting, ting, tingling? Ting, something's that. tingling. You know, we always <laughs> say this every tingling. time the Fox NFL Sunday comes on. It's like... And I'm like, I'm like, that is the the, the sleigh ride song. It's like... Every time Fox giddy NFL up, Sunday, every single time, I'm like, how do they get away with ripping off the sleigh ride song? Yep. Anyway, so we were having a conversation up up here the other day with our VIPs talking about, obviously, Pub Disciple, Dumb. I wrote a song called Easter Bunny many, back in back in 19, the year of our Lord, Anno Domini, 1997. Was that like the third Easter? It was. It, it, we were just now figuring out that that was the time of year that we should celebrate it. Anyway, so um, I obviously approached ministry a lot differently in 1997, maybe a little more in your face and, and angry, and this is the way it is. Really closed-minded, kind of, you know, like, take this and take that and let me... Oh, you don't like Jesus and shove it in your face kind of an attitude. So I'm, I'm literally telling... Uh, parents and kids from the stage, things like, you know, Santa Claus is dead, Santa Claus is dead, the Easter Bunny is dead, the Easter Bunny is dead. And I was, we were talking about it, and, and the, I'll never forget this, this father with his son in his hand, you know, walking up to me and saying, I can't believe you did that. You know, and I'm like, and I'm like, saying something just really stupid and awful, just like, well, somebody needed to tell him or just something oh so gosh. bad, right? So, of course, I would marry a beautiful, lovely, awesome w- woman, human being who, of course, who wants to tell our kids, you know, about Santa and, and, and celebrate that. And, of course, I'm just like, you know, well, I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. So I'll just, you know, 
Well, she's like, what are you going to do if they come up and ask you about it? I'll be like, ask your mom or whatever. So we're, we always think that that's funny. And then Josiah is in the exact opposite, yep. same same exact boat, but the exact opposite. The other side of the coin, yeah. The, uh, yeah, the claws coin. So, so we were talking about it the other night, and he was... It, Josiah loves Christmas more than anyone. Any human being, and well, I'll, yeah. I'll never. And he was telling this to a group of VIPs, and and it was like, you know, mom's probably gonna be saying whatever, but then Josiah, oh, the inner time, is gonna be whispering in their ear, Santa loves you. <laughs> and I, I've always thought that that's the funniest thing I've ever heard yeah. in my entire life. I was like, yeah, because I have a six-week-old baby, and I was like, I was like, yeah, once once she gets old enough, her mom's gonna do what Kevin does and and say, oh yeah, go ask your dad about Santa. But I'm already getting a head start. I'm just every time I I'm I'm holding her, I just say Santa loves you. <laughs> <laughs> I learned uh, something really interesting about Easter. We celebrate it as the resurrection holiday, even though it's not linked to like a specific calendar type date, right? Kind of like Christmas. Yeah. And I always wondered where the word Easter came from, and recently I learned that it comes from, I forget Ishtar. which culture, but the pagan yep. god Ishtar, Ishtar. Yep. who is the goddess of fertility, represented by rabbits. Eggs. And eggs. Because I always thought to myself, okay, what rabbit is laying these eggs, Right. first of all? And where? which one did Jesus come out of on the third and, day? <laughs> and, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and is that where tombs come from right, as well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but like, like really, I, I never understood like the lineage of. It is. It is. You can go down. Man. You can go down the rabbit hole of ah. pagan Easter. <laughs> Thank you, pagan Easter, and then pagan Christmas too, and right. how they're you know uh, celebrated on like the the solstice, whatever. All that. You can go right. down that rabbit hole, and right. it's a and big. Grab like, it all if you want to go down. Halloween is linked to the harvest holiday, and it's, it wasn't always a horror movie holiday. <laughs> it, it is really funny though, because like Easter is so like singularly about the two things. Like everyone pictures the bunny and the eggs, which yeah, already so weird. Su super weird, and then Jesus rising from the grave, and like no one thinks about it. You know what I mean? Like it's not like no, no one was ever weird. like you know yeah rabbits because. You're supposed to reproduce a lot starting now. You no, know? it's just like, it's just marketed <laughs> okay, really yeah. well. And we all see it from the time we're kids. It's kind of a and creepy like, subliminal thing. <laughs> it's now, weird. Now that I'm like adding it up, it's like, wait a minute. It's super weird, but we all just go along with it. trying to give us spring fever. And I love, well, that's the thing is I love when I, when I, when it gets to be like, it's, it's out of winter time and it starts to warm up and it's like, oh, Easter, you see the pastel colors and the decorations, it's like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Which you know, pastel colors represent. I'm just kidding. I, don't I know. know. I was gonna, yeah. That's just nice. that's just people like that. They so represent all those, all those Christians criticizing Halloween if they actually. Oh, trust me. There's Christians out there that criticize Easter. Okay. Yeah. Big time. But yeah. a majority of them go to their sunrise service on Easter and are right. like, "Oh yeah, let's worship Christ this." And well, no, no, no. Because that's Christmas? they only they own they you know my my dad's church is that way. Like we would have we would only call it Resurrection Sunday though. We wouldn't call it Easter. We would call it Resurrection uh, Sunday. And, interesting. Like, I've yeah. never heard yeah. of that Christmas, distinguishment. Christmas has the exact same problems. I mean, you think about it that 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 Jesus was actually well, this, probably this born in the spring and. And all yeah. this kind of stuff. Christmas has the exact same problem. Well, well, these are American holidays. These are well, not, not really. But well, yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Like they're they're modern wet, recreations wet, uh, yeah. or modern interpretations of Western, holidays. Western culture, Westernized holidays, right? That we celebrate now on certain days of certain types of uh, retail gaps in the year, <laughs> <You> <laughs> know, right? Things like that, and. You can't link your faith to anything that comes and goes based around a schedule like that because it's, I mean, that's also, really what, it, America wouldn't have a holiday if it didn't serve a financial purpose because our mm -hmm. country is supposed to work that way. So, like, that's why it's recognized that way. And obviously the church and the people and believers bring those holidays, like, to mean what they are, and yep. that's why you should celebrate it and celebrate it for what it is. Right. But to assign some sort of like worth or unworth to it, that's just like your personal job to do on your own. And like, I don't appreciate it when people are on a mission to like 
change what somebody's celebrating on a certain day. Sure. Or, you know, yeah. Oh, you're celebrating it wrong, or you're celebrating it on the wrong day. I think that's all silly. I just, I just don't like getting criticized about pumpkins. Like, <laughs> we know. Like, like, I'm just saying. Go like, ahead, man. Let's re- hear it. I really love pumpkin pie. And if on the way <laughs> to pumpkin pie. Did you hear how southern pie, he just sounded oh, yeah. right there? Oh, yeah. If on the way to pumpkin pie, I just want to make my pumpkin into a piece of art while my pie cooks. <laughs> Like, does it make me satanic for eating the pumpkin pie? Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I give up. Haven't you learned by now? I if you up. carve a disciple symbol into a pumpkin around Halloween, it's instantly, you yes. you may still go to heaven, but probably not. Ugh. We're giving we're giving Joey new people to be bitter at right now. <laughs> <laughs> but if you would hey. like to, but if you would like to decorate a tree that has nothing to do with Christ on Christmas, that's fine. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we had, I told you we had, I had some, had some wonderful brothers in Christ, maybe some, maybe a sister or two as well, comment on my Instagram because my kids, we celebrated Halloween oh. by dressing up and trick or treating and they, they always have some nice comments, which if you want to comment on my Instagram, things like that, please do feel free to do it and know that if I will delete it. it. There. I will happily delete it the moment I read it. So you can comment all happen. you want. But that's that's just one of those those things where I'm like, wh- how did you not celebrating that make you more holy than anybody else? Well, the answer is we'll find out when we get to heaven. We will find God's out when gonna, we get to heaven. God's gonna tell you exactly why they're holier than you. Look, here's the deal: it wouldn't matter if it was Halloween or if it was Veterans Day or if it was Flag Day. My kids look awesome dressed up as Cher, Dolly Parton, and Elvis any day of the week, all right? It just happened to be Halloween. Riker's my I, favorite Elvis of all time. I really hope you dress them up as those things again on Flag Day this, <laughs> this coming year. It's coming out be, quick. It's true that they have know. been Cher, Dolly Parton, and Elvis several days since Halloween, so <laughs> they, they love those outfits. I wasn't able to get my Halloween costume together, but I was going to do a, a trash bag with pictures of Eminem all over it, the rapper, and be a bag of M&M's for Halloween. Just wasn't able to get there. It's good. Well, now everyone's going to steal that idea for next year who's listening yeah. to this podcast. And they're so. going to tell me how I'm going to hell for acknowledging the M&M the exists. M&M. <laughs> but M- me and M&M have the same birthday. Shout out to you, bro. Good, good to s- yeah, it's good to share same year? with you. Thanks for Probably listening not. to our podcast. Yep. Bye! Yep. He was talking uh, to Marshall Mathers. Oh, yeah. and, and you know, speaking of the, the holiday thing, there's a great example. Veterans Day is not a religious holiday, but is like, as far as holidays go, there's no better cause. You could probably make a case that every day should be Veterans Day somehow. Just like Mother's in Day. In my opinion. Or Mother's Day, or, you know. Or Valentine's Day. We're, we're, no. we're talking about <laughs> celebrating. Dude, you, sir, all right? Did you celebrate Mother's Day last year with Heather? Yeah. You we, did. We, I think we, I remember we, that. We, like, did, yeah, I just kind of acknowledged it at least. And we're like, this is cool. Mother's let me Day tell observed. You, let me tell you something. Husbandry 101, all right? It's taken me a long time to figure this out. That Mother's Day to my wife is probably more important than her birthday. Wow. So. What about anniversary? It's way more important than anniversary. Mother's Day is a freaking huge deal at my house and it took me years to figure this out and many trips to the doghouse to figure this out all right like i'm talking don't forget to you know have letters from the kids to your child who doesn't know how to speak yet she needs to make she needs to send mom a letter okay and I, yes Evelyn's already i'm reading. teaching you I, i'm teaching you things right now that you need to know Evelyn's right. already reading and writing. Yes, She's Evelyn needs to already have like academia. a speech prepared for mom on Mother's Day. Otherwise, you're going to be in, in real trouble for not having that. Yeah. It's every father's duty to burn pancakes the morning of Mother's Day. <laughs> That's a, it's an American tradition. Wake up your wife with the smell of that burnt food. Yep. And a crying baby. And a crying baby yeah. and say, help. <laughs> In this current culture, you could be a mother if you wanted to. It's totally fine. If I identified as one, maybe. That's right. Oh, on that note, we're getting out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Run! Yep. That's like, all for this week. We'll see you next time when we sit down with Vladimir Putin and get the inside scoop. On his Twitter password. <laughs> 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 is, is, is my space best. Yes. Best.